Hello and welcome back to another episode of Internal Rambles. This is your girl Rochelle. Thank you for tuning back in if you are a returned listener and if you are new, welcome. Internal Rambles is a podcast that is as it may sound. It is the internal thoughts, the rambling, racing, all over the place thoughts of your girl Rochelle and I cover everything from my life, my career, my goals, relationships, dating, entertainment, trending topics, buying a home, my raves, my rants, what's going on in the world, entertainment, music, TV, just uh, movies. I don't really watch a lot of movies, but if I do, it is just come along on this ride. I hope it is entertaining for you. It is just my train of thought. And my bonus content, I do review reality shows. I have been recapping Married at First Sight, Ready to Love, Love and Marriage on OWN TV. So it really is just, it's pop culture, it's life. I am a professional 30-something <laughs> woman just trying to make it happen and live my life, live my best life as possible, as well as possible as I can. So my normal content releases every Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, wherever you get your podcasts from. And my bonus content releases whenever I am able to record it. You can catch me on YouTube. That is just, I po- I release my audio on there just in case you want to interact with me. If you want to leave me a comment, if you want to leave me some topics that you want me to cover. If you want to, especially my reality recaps, if you want to con- if you want to communicate with me and talk about these reality shows and how these folks be tripping, that is a place over there to be interactive. You don't have to. But I am over, I do release my audio over on YouTube. Just search on YouTube, Internal Rambles, No Space, and your girl will pop up. So I am going to begin this podcast. This is actually season two of Internal Rambles. And season two, I started this new segment of Rochelle's Raves which is something that I'm feeling positive, something I'm excited about, or Rochelle's rants. That's something that is upsetting me. It's upsetting me and my (laughs) homegirls. Not sitting right in my spirit. And I do have a rant today, and I think I've talked about this before. I'm not sure, but one of the things that my rant today is that I cannot stand people that are in when people in customer service jobs are miserable and they take it out on me as the customer i'm sorry but i'm not sorry that you are unhappy working at mcdonald's starbucks macy's even though i don't go in stores like that um but don't take it out on me child it ain't my fault listen i have worked in I've worked in stores, I've worked in retail. I understand it, I get it. But I also know I've been I was I took them trainings, some customer service trainings. You know, they say the customer's always right. You got to be there with a smile, boo-boo. And also you can't be lazy on the job. You have to do what your job entails. And if I'm not treating you no type of way, don't come at me with the negative energy. And I was recently in a store. I'm not going to call no names. And the cashier did not want to bag my stuff. And I'm like, um, they literally asked me to assist them with the bagging. And this was an able-bodied individual. There was nothing wrong with them. They were just being lazy. And I'm like, I didn't know. (laughs) I had picked up a second job as a bagger. If you don't bag my stuff, (laughs) and I was like, okay, am I going to cut up in this store 
today or not and I, I literally only had one bag of stuff and I was like let me help this person so I can get up out this store like, I don't know if they were having a rough day I didn't even have a lot of stuff that was the, I'm like what are you gonna do when you have that individual that has seven eight bags of stuff you, are you gonna have them help you and I've turned up in a store you know what I'm saying? I've, when I knew that I was being discriminated against and I didn't know it at first, like I literally, I went into a store and I'm not going to tell the story. Maybe one day I'll tell the story, but I, I was discriminated against in a store and it, when I, in the moment, I didn't pay no attention to it. I was confused. I was like, because this kind of was, it was one, I literally came into the store for one thing. I literally was in, like, I just needed one thing. And, then I, and I didn't real in the moment, I didn't realize what was going on. And it didn't dawn on me until I got to the car and I, and I, I had to put two and two together. And I was like, and it was a, it was a race, it was a racial situation. And I, I was when I when it dawned on me what happened I said oh not today and I literally took and when I tell you I was it, you know how like you really just you really need one thing and you run in the store and I was looking rough that day listen <laughs> you throw your clothes you get dressed real quick throw your clothes like I just I really just need this one item so I'm in a rush right you know and I, I didn't it didn't dawn on me because I also like I really haven't I have experienced being as a child actually um being racially profiled in the store like but it I, like it really I've only had only a, like a couple of instances where this has happened and it was so spread out but I wasn't paying attention and so but when I got to the car I put I I, I had I had to like put the sequence of it because I just was confused because I, I had to check over like I had to run the situation through my head and when I put two and two together and got four, I said, oh, not today, honey. Because also, you're not going to play me like that. And you're not going to discriminate, you know. But I also thought this probably was not the first time. So I was like, let me educate you real quick. So I had to educate this, this woman. Because I was like, this probably, maybe not the exact same situation, but she's probably been treating people wrong others wrong so I went in that store and demanded to speak to the supervisor and told them what happened him what happened and he understood he was like ma'am I'm very sorry you're right and and I turned up in that store I said listen I've been coming here for a year you know I'm not gonna get into. It. I don't have the energy to, to tell that story, and it, it's it's kind of involved, and I had to really explain that. But so you know, I understand. I have no problem addressing a situation. And what I'm trying to say is, I have no problem addressing a situation in the store. But I was like, not today, you know. <laughs> and I wasn't. She wasn't discriminating against me. It just it was poor customer service. And I just, I cannot stand, listen, I've worked in retail, I've worked in customer service, you know, I, I get it. it, especially when you not, you have them days but you're not feeling it, but you gotta push through, like this is your job. You have to be a professional, and you have to, it. and that is a pet peeve as someone who has been on both sides of the coin. I get it, I understand it, you still have to do your job don't make my experience be piss poor because you are in a piss poor mood so that's my rant <laughs> i cannot i'm a i am a stickler about customer service i will stop going to a store for example and drive extra to a place that i know gives me good customer service i am very I am a stickler about customer service. I am very, um, I'm very particular about where I spend my coins, my hard earned money. And if you, for example, where I live at, there's a gas station literally like two minutes from my house. 
but I had a negative experience with the owner of the gas station, I spend an extra two minutes and go around the corner and go to the gas station where I don't know who owns it, but no matter over the years, no matter who works there, and there, there's been there's one lady that she's worked there for years, but no matter who else works there, everyone is always kind, helpful, nice. I've never had a problem with that gas station, no matter how many different employees they go through it's positive customer service home play and it, it doesn't make sense to drive that extra two three minutes because there's literally a gas station two minutes from my house but i'm not giving you know unless i have to i i try really hard not to go to this gas station because the owner was really nasty to me one day i don't play <laughs> i don't play i'm sorry and that is my rave of the pot my I'm sorry not my rave my rant of this podcast so today I thought I would do something that I did I started my podcast uh, in August of 2021 August (laughs) October of 2021 and I thought that I would do something that I did back then I did this kind of questions thing it was just kind of random questions it was my about me episode if you want to check that out please do I thought that would be a good thing so that you listeners could kind of thought it was kind of cute and it was a way to kind of get to know me just random questions and so I thought I would do that again Um, another questions episode just to kind of get to know me a little bit more and I'm swagger jacking a little bit this questionnaire I don't know if this is the exact questionnaire but this idea I got from the bald and the beautiful which is a podcast is it a podcast I don't know if it's a podcast that they have together, but anyways, with uh, Melissa Fredericks, Kevin Fredericks, Angel, Lakita Moore, Tanksley, and Marcus Tanksley that they do together. And it is the questionnaire that they did was questions to ask your friends and so I again I don't know if this is it might be the same question there but that's the that's the questionnaire they did and so I found a similar if not the same questionnaire so this one is actually from the women's health magazine and it was released in April this year and it's the hundred best questions to ask your friends to get to know them better I am not going to answer a hundred questions but I'm gonna poke around and answer some of these and I hope this is kind of cool and fun and I hope maybe you get to learn a little bit more about me and if you don't know um if this is your first time or if you didn't get to know or didn't listen to my intro episode or my about me just a little kind of baseline info about your girl Rochelle I am a 30 something (laughs) African American woman single no children I do not want children but if the lord blesses me with them obviously i will raise them and love them i am a therapist by trade but i am not currently practicing direct care but i do work in the mental health field and i love music my all-time favorite hobby is to go to concerts but due to the pandezi I did not I had not been to a concert in like two three years but this year that all changed (laughs) and I was able to see um Jodeci so one concert I went to was Jodeci New Edition and Uncle Charlie I also saw the Backstreet Boys I saw John Mulaney and I'm actually gonna see um, John Mulaney again I have tickets to see him again so I've kind of (laughs) 
been able to get back on track with my concerts and um, I stopped counting. I would say I've seen at least 70 plus concerts in my lifetime. My first concert ever, and this and it ain't too shabby, I ain't going was Janet Jackson and Usher for the Velvet Rope Tour. So yeah, and one of the, the kind of bonus content that I have been doing, I've done two episodes this far, please check those out is my top five albums from my favorite artists and I've already done Jodeci and Tony Braxton. I want to, my next one I'm hoping to get out of the R&B realm genre and get into, I love, I'm all over the place, I love rock, R&B, hip hop, gospel, Shania Twain. So I'm hoping to get into a different genre with my next installment of that series I don't know when that will that's a a random series that I do periodically so I don't know when the next installment of that will be but I do plan on getting out of the R&B genre so soon come with that and yeah so that's just a little bit just kind of like basic information about your girl and so I hope these questions are kind of interesting and fun and that enjoyable and so today during this podcast every now and then when I'm podcasting I sip on a little beverage so I do have a little wine with me today so if you are of legal drinking age in America that's 21 and up uh sit back and get your favorite beverage if you want to sip on a little adult juice get you a little some shum or if not hey get you some water pop juice tea coffee and let's get to these questions okay so they have it broken down in the section so the sections are personal history and present focus questions future minded questions so those are the three categories so I'm gonna pick a few out of the out of those categories so I'm gonna start with personal history questions so and I hope I listen to my about me the the first questions one and I and I I'm hoping not to overlap the, the type of questions that I did in that one but I honestly I ain't gonna remember <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so the first one is what's your favorite childhood memory? Um, and I, I feel like I might have answered this before, but it doesn't matter. So here we are. Honestly, like my favorite childhood memory, and I, I may pick more than one, but the first thought that came to mind is I didn't appreciate it at, at the time. But my father passed away in my 20s, and so he's, uh, actually this year was the 10th year anniversary of his passing, um, so God bless and, uh, the dead and RIP to my father. Um, so my favorite childhood memory is with him, and he used to like make he taught like he was very instrumental in teaching me how to cook and he would make me it my father my mother was like the normal like day-to-day dinner cooker it, dinner cook <laughs> but he would cook during the holidays and so that was always special because my father was from down south so he was the from scratch there were no recipes like he knew how to cook things from scratch so we we were getting the sweet potato pies from scratch the yams the potato salads the cornbread so he taught me how to cook a lot of those things and unfortunately I wish I definitely paid attention but I didn't commit a lot of those to memory so like trying to recreate some of those recipes in my adult life once he passed boy that was trial and tribulations but I I 
did like two years ago I were able to recreate some of those things and I was so proud because trial and error but um I'm like some of his recipes I'm the only one who knows how to make them I'm the only one who knows how to make his potato salad fully um, and some other things so I think that's like my favorite childhood memories is just like being in the kitchen with him and cooking or watching him cook and him teaching me how to cook and I used to be like oh I gotta you know I used to stay in my room a lot <laughs> being a teenager and young girl and just doing teenage BS right but when you know he was just like come on in this kitchen we about to da -da 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 -da. but I get it and he used to tell me I'm doing this so that you could fend for yourself so you don't have to depend on nobody to cook you know how to cook and he's right I do know how to cook I don't like cooking but I do know how to cook because and he also he he used to tell me you don't have to have a lot of money to make a good meal he used to teach me how to make meals that cost little to nothing and I appreciate that because I do know how to throw something together now and when you're, I moved out of my house, my parents' home in my early 20s. And when you in grad school, <laughs> you don't, and you're working part time and you, you know, you're intern. I didn't have a lot of money. So that, that was very priceless trying to cook a meal. And you ain't got a lot of money, you know, buying groceries and stretching those meals out. So. Long story short, that's one of my favorite childhood memories. And I think also when we used to get together, me, mom, I was with my parents a lot, very close to both of my parents. And in different ways, like my relationship with my mother was that. And my relationship with my father was that. And then my relationship with the both of them was that, right? But we would, you know, get together and play cards and talk and so I miss kind of that like I still play cards with my mother and I'm still close to hang out with my mom you know when I our schedules are like so opposite but like I just was went shopping with my mom like we went to like home goods and TJ Maxx and you know so but whenever we would get together and do things like that like that was very fun so just you know any quality time I think with my parents and you know whether it was with both of them or alone with my father. I think those were, like, my favorite childhood memories. Um, all the time of my head, that's what I got. <laughs> okay, what's next? Um, what's the best advice a family member gave you growing up? So this ties right in. So my father used to always say without family what do you have and I, and I do believe that now let me tell you something <laughs> not everybody in your family is going to be supportive of you 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 gonna have them trifling family members or let's 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 be honest you gonna have them them family members that smile on your face talk behind your back I mean we you I I ain't here to, to spill no family tea but but also, you know, my family was very supportive of me. Um, if I needed anything, you know, my immediate family especially. And I, if, if I don't have anything else, I know that I had my mom, my dad, you know, my siblings. You know what I'm saying? So I would say that um, was the best advice. And then I think, you know, my father always used to say, keep going, you know, when I would be like you know I really want to do this but I don't know he would be he would say no go do it keep going <clears throat> so that's probably the best advice um who was your first celebrity crush I think it might have been Albie Shore but I'm not sure <laughs> I think it was Albie Shore. Child, I used to love me some Albie Shore. I had that album. What was that album? I don't know if it was his first album. I gotta find it. Bear with me. Because I see it in my head. 
Oh yes, in effect mode. Oh yeah, I think he was my first cele celebrity crush. And I was so sad somehow. And Now I'm dating myself because I said I had that album. If you were if you, kids, Google what an album are. But you know, I guess records are made. People have record players, right? And I remember, oh, night and day. Chill. And somehow, I don't know what happened, that album broke. When I tell you that crushed my little heart, but then I, I think when, when that album broke, I said, you know what, F albums. And I never bought another album as a child. I went to cassette tapes. Because I was like, these albums are not trustworthy. <laughs> I could not deal with them albums child oh no so I, I think I'll be sure was my first crush and then I went on to oh Ronnie DeVoe I let me tell you something I don't know why my mama let me do this can I can I is this a safe place when I was a child and I was too young by the way I wrote a fan letter to Ronnie DeVoe <laughs> I loved BBD and I don't know what it said I'm sure it just said I love you guys so much and I love you and thank you and da, 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 da. but why was I writing a fan letter to this grown man <laughs> well my mother she let me do it I imagine she sent it I mean I don't know otherwise but I definitely wrote a fan letter to Ronnie DeVoe when I was a child and I loved, obviously, I moved on to Jodeci, but I also loved, I will tell you who I also loved. I loved, God, God bless the dead, I loved Luke Perry as a child, too. I loved 90210, and I loved me some Luke Perry. That's a little insight into my life, real quick. <laughs> How have you dealt with past disappointments? I will tell you, and I, this is just being generic, like I'm not thinking of anything like specific. Um, let me take a little sip of my wine and pardon me real quick. <clears throat> As someone who has experienced loss at a young age, I started losing family members and I have in significant people <laughs> and has experienced tragic loss throughout my life. When you start going to a lot of funerals and I started that this started happening when I was in an elementary school, I think you start um and as someone who was brought up um, going to church not every Sunday but you know faith and God was always instilled in me and so I think for me it just was a natural um, and I don't know how to explain it just kind of I always it was natural for me to start looking towards faith but then when you st for me as someone who I just I always I don't know I you know growing up it's like you knew to pray right but then it's like I had to grasp onto something because it kind of was like wow like I'm experiencing a lot of unfortunate events so for me ultimately without getting into a lot of stuff it's just like dealing with disappointments, dealing with negative events, dealing with loss, dealing with grief. And I definitely have grief and loss issues because I definitely haven't dealt fully with, with the losses that I've had in my life. But I learned, I have learned to cope and deal in a way where I manage and I'm okay as an individual. But I, I do think that at some point in my life, I will have to take a look at some and really kind of heal better or more or something I don't know 
but just faith in God and prayer and that's how I've dealt with disappointments in my life and just planning and just because plan A didn't work out that doesn't mean you stop it just means you for me it's like I have plan A and plan B typically um but if not if plan A don't work if it's something I really want then I go to plan B that's just kind of how I um, just be- how I manage it's like just because plan A didn't work that doesn't mean that it's not meant to be it just means that maybe I need to pivot or I need to rethink a situation or you know what I mean so that's how I deal who who and I'm going to change up this question do I have a role model? I don't really think I've, like, I think my parents, right, I, I, you know, as a child, you look up to them, and, but as an adult, like, I don't really think I have role, I have a role model. I think that I have people in my life that, like, mo- I, they always say, like, you are who you're with, right? So I just, I'm always mindful of the company that I keep, And I think there's people in my life that there's things about them that I really admire and or like I love about them. And I'm like, oh, I I aspire to like I, I want things for myself. So I think that they like encourage me to do better, to do more, to strive, to improve. Like I have a friend who he's not like formally educated and I've mentioned him I mention him all the time right (laughs) my circle's pretty small so but he's so intelligent like he's the type of person that will like go to a museum on Monday an art exhibit on Tuesday trap karaoke on Wednesday and be reading Dante's Inferno on Thursday. Like, and I'm not exaggerating. These are literal things that he's done. And he had taught himself another language and he's like conversational in it. Like he's just very intelligent. And I'm like, you're awesome. And I'm the one sitting here with the degrees, but some of the things that he can do, I can do, you know. But, and it doesn't make me less than, it's just everyone has their own abilities. And I would just side note, internal rambles. I studied Spanish a really long time, and he's conversational in Spanish. I wish I could get back to where I was and go further. I, I want to be conversational in Spanish. I've lost my Spanish. I keep, I wish I, I need to learn. Just, I used to definitely used to understand it like I used to I'm listen I used to watch telenovelas and wouldn't understand what was going on there used to be this telenovela that I used to love and I think it was called Marimar what was it called I got I have to know I always forget I think I used to love that telenovela what was it called but I've when you like it's like with anything when you don't study it or like maintain a skill you lose it and I didn't maintain it I stopped selling uh yes it was called Marimar I loved that telenovela (sighs) sorry um but you lose it and so I want to get back to, and I, I had bought like these Spanish CDs and I was, but I lost them in moving. I lost them. I have no idea where they are. And I, I have Duolingo. Is it Duolingo? I had it on my phone, but I just, it's like taking the time to really, and the thing about like these apps or whatever, they, they teach you like the traditional formal Spanish, but that's not really how people speak like day-to-day conversation like it'll help you like if you go out of the country like you'll be able to interact but I hope to be able to get back to where I was and even farther but 
I still try to speak it like my smart devices um, like my echo like Google like the Google devices you can talk to it in Spanish and it will respond in English but it will respond like I try to do that like with certain things like ask it like what time it is what's the weather things like that just to try to like get my confidence in speaking Spanish and like when I went to a Spanish restaurant recently I spoke in Spanish you know um so little things like that help me but then I have like other friends who like are like such hard workers like I had a friend who she worked she always worked two jobs like she because ultimately it was to maintain a lifestyle but she always was like if because the type the field that she was in she they always the the nature of the field was not stable so there was always the risk of her being laid off and she was like listen if I got laid off I still got my second job but also to maintain the lifestyle that she wanted she was like I gotta work these two jobs and I always was just like man she's a grinder and I was like I don't have the energy to grind like that like I work hard but working two jobs <laughs> so it's like these little things or like you know I have one friend who's just like She's just so incredible and always winning awards and just super smart, super talented, super. I mean, she she don't want to do it, but totally probably could get into politics. And I, I you know, I don't really wish that. I, that's a very challenging endeavor. But the only reason why I would want her to get into politics is because I think that she would just be a woman of power and change and I think she would just be great for the community even if it isn't even in our community where we live at I just think that she would just help people in general so I mean it's just like all these amazing people that I have in my circle it's like yo I know some bomb people like I ain't gonna front you know and you know, I'm okay myself. <laughs> I don't know. I don't always, I know that I've been successful and I am, you know, but I guess I don't always feel as, and it's just the nature because of where I work at. Like people like to minimize me and don't even, don't respect me, but then I do get respected. So it's just, I know that I've worked hard and I have had, I have been successful. It's just, I need to keep it pushing so I can get into the right work environment long story short <laughs> all right let's move on let's see let's get into some present focused questions how would you describe your current emotional state oh my god when I tell you this is a on this is a very interesting convert uh topic because I was just thinking about this so today I'm doing okay <laughs> I have realized though, and this is hormonal, I be getting angry and I, anger is a, is a, um, and it's very fleeting, but sir, I'm just so irritable and I just think like, I'm just, I, I, part of it is, and I mentioned this in a recent podcast episode, like there's so much going on in the world, so much injustice, our rights being literally snatched from us so much discrimination but also like things like at my job be agitating me and I just feel like I just be like trained to go just be like and I'm like that's I'm really an even killed person so the fact that I be getting so agitated and pissed off but then I I inhale exhale and I'm fine but I just think like that elevated emotion happening even if it's just for like two minutes, that's not a normal thing for me. So, and I don't really like that. So, it, I just stay prayed up. <laughs> and there's a lot going on. It's just like I, I don't want to be so elevated. Or, but I'm fine. I'm actually pretty content, pretty relaxed, pretty content right now today. But that's an interesting question. I saw, I saw something on social media that like ticked me off and that's why I'd be having to stay off of social media 
do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert i'm definitely an introvert i definitely process things internally i'm more of a quiet person but i do talk What books are you currently reading? None. I, I've started two and I haven't finished. Not nearing one. So I'm not even going to talk about that right now. What's your favorite item in your wardrobe right now? I am obsessed with Calvin Klein. Especially purses. I've been obsessed with Calvin Klein. That's not a new thing. Like his like sweatshirts hoodies but i stay wanting to buy calvin klein bags i don't even know is he popular is that like a popular thing i don't i don't ascribe to social trends fashion trends <clears throat> i am obsessed with calvin klein bags who was the last person i talked to on the phone me madre my mom What's my biggest insecurity? Right now, I will say it's my pandemic weight that I've put on. And actually, this coming week, I'm going, my plan is to stop shoving food in my mouth and ordering food and get back to eating healthy and exercising. How would you improve your current living space right now if you could still haven't bought a house and I have to, I'm, I'm up, I have to renew my lease. So buying a house, it will be Lord willing next year. But this is actually a very on time question because I just, I was talking about this. I just went with my mom to all these stores and just bought things to, I bought like a painting for my dining room. I bought like some accents for like um my tables like switching out like um pill like putting pillow like just different things to decorate my house just to kind of spruce it up so that's what I'm doing do I journal and if so what do I write about I don't journal but I do like per se but I do um like um my devotion my devotional and gratitude and, and honestly podcasting is not journaling or blogging but I do talk about my life so I feel like that's like that's like a um a type of chronicling of my life in a way Do you worry about your future or th take things as they come? I have anxiety, so there's always that impending, you know, there's always a worry about something sometimes, but I just prey on it. Does anything keep you up at night? Yes, insomnia. <laughs> Bruh, I'm being honest. Insomnia. I have ins insomniac moments. What's your biggest career goal? My biggest career goal currently is to get another position. When do you think... This is, this is going to be my last question. When do you think you, you'll know you've met the one? Child. Let me take a sip on that one. That, that's, that's a sip. That's a sip question. I think for me, I will know when I enjoy being around them I want to be around them I feel safe being with them I see a future with them like I can see building like I can see like I I have I can see like what I want to do for my life right like I have goals and it's it's not like like I can 
I can't put like a time frame. Like I know I want to do this, I want to do that. And the time frame of it is hazy. It's just like things I want to do, right? But it's things I want to do. There's no per there's no partner, there's no man involved in that because there's no I'm single. So I think I I'll know the one quotation marks when there's a significant other when there's a man involved in those plans when I'm planning my life with someone and I feel content and excited and positive and we're making plans together and I feel comfortable with making in in an in an intertwining my life with that person and I feel that they're responsible and that they have not only and also that my goals are not contingent with them fully that I like there's my goals and then there's the we goals and that he also has his goals because I think it's very dangerous to fully have your whole life wrapped up in a person I, and I know like that's what marriage you know because when people I've seen you know I've seen it you hear about these people that they wrap their whole life around a person and they get divorced and it's just like I don't know what to do with myself I never had to do this or I haven't you know oh no you know there needs to be a we but there ne- there's still and there needs to be a we and a us but there still needs to be a me I never want to lose myself in an individual so, um, yeah, and I think when I feel like, you know, I'm loved and I'm given love and there really truly is love, you know, um, and I, I feel really, um, positive and content and happy and, I mean, I think you just, like, I, I think you just know, like, I think like either I think it's also I I don't think you really can fully explain it I think you just know like this is the one I I think it's a mental thing but I think it's a feeling like you feel it you know it but then I think you feel it and you can't really fully explain it because I think there's a there's a certain level of that you can't really explain it because it's a feeling you know like you just like oh yeah this one (laughs) so that's dead this did um yeah and I ain't never felt that before so you know we'll see what happens I, I stay prayed up but I do believe it will happen I gotta have faith my father used to say I got hope and faith so that is this questions I hope maybe you got a little insight into who I am I don't know if it was entertaining or not you know I hopefully it was at least insightful and listen I have had a whirlwind of about three months busy bit let me when I tell you your girl was busy 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 um but I hope that and you know it's still at the end of the day take time for yourself love on yourself enjoy yourself do what you need to do for you and I hope that you are well and if you are feeling overwhelmed it's um take time out I remember when I was in grad school and I think I may, I may have mentioned this before but you know whatever um uh, I was overwhelmed and I, I didn't ha- I didn't I felt like I didn't have like no time and I just I couldn't do anything I just was so busy and I remember I had someone was like if nothing else before you go to bed take 10 minutes you got 10 minutes and just read take just take 10 minutes to read and it may take you two minutes to fit to two minutes I'm sorry two months to finish a book but when you finish that book at the end of the day you're take the two things will happen You're taking 10 minutes for yourself without distraction, not contingent to anything or anyone else. But when you finish that book, you'll be like, oh, 
I've accomplished this. I've finished that book. So it's twofold, you know. You have to take care of yourself. You have to do what you need to do for you. And whatever that, or whatever, if there's a project, you know, a little project that you're working on, if you like to paint, if you like to sew, I don't know what you like to do. (laughs) But if you can just take 10, 15 minutes out of your day to just work on it, chip away at it, and then when it's done, you're going to be like, oh, you did that. super super because i this podcast is time consuming but every time i i'm telling you every time these episodes upload i feel so 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 accomplished and so proud of myself and happy and i listen to my podcast and even sometimes i listen like i'll be doing other things i just be listening i'll be listening to my darn self (laughs) But also it helps me to get better and gives me some ideas for some future stuff. And, you know, it, it, it it's a, a lot of things that go into that. So that's that. Song of the podcast. Every main podcast I do a song of the podcast. It could be something that I'm listening to, something that I'm loving. And I am going to do a rock song because this artist came up on my Instagram feed. And I was like, oh, yeah, I love the killers and this is one uh actually from their most recent album and i'm not going to get into why this well i was i think they did a recent video and um i was like dang what is that song that i loved from their new album i couldn't even think about it and then i listened to it and i was like oh yeah I've never seen the killers. I may have this may have been a previous song of the podcast, but it's okay. There's no there's no rules on my podcast. I try not to. Um repeat songs, but I mean I can't remember all the songs that I've <laughs> that I've had be my podcast episode songs. So this song is just Brandon Flowers from The Killers just has the most amazing voice. And it's just a very beautiful, 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 beautiful. Uh, did I mention beautiful? Um, <laughs> voice and... The song is called West Hills, and it's just a very beautiful song. So that is my song of the podcast. If you like The Killers or rock music or whatever, check it out. Beautiful, beautiful song. Thank you for tuning in. Again, as I mentioned, my episodes releases every Thursday, Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. Please subscribe to me so that you get my content immediately. And if you have a little bit of a moment... Head on over to Apple Podcasts, leave me a review over there. And if you want to interact with me, head on over to YouTube, leave me a comment, a question, some topics. If you want me to cover something or you have some ideas or you have some questions, whatever, you can interact with me over on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. This is your girl, Rochelle, and I will be talking to you soon.